Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome to another uh, video series of this designing a RISC-V pipeline for version. Uh, this is in a lecture number two, in which we will be going to cover the first stage of uh, implementation of the fetch cycle in a pipeline code version. Uh, in this state, we are going to, in video, we are going to see how we can implement the fetch cycle and convert our single cycle or fetch cycle into a pipeline version. Uh, so let's start with the uh, lecture. Uh, before going uh, into the implementation, I will show you how you can code all of that. Let's see, uh, cover a little bit of theory of how does it work. Uh, recap of what is the pipeline, and then we will see that what is the fast cycle and what modules they are consist of, so that we can get the upper idea of uh, of of a picture of, of the implementation. Then we can go move towards the coding part of it. So. Starting with the abstract view of the pipelining, as we have discussed in the previous lecture, uh, pipeline is something that you have divided your whole complete uh, task into smaller chunks of it, right? So as you can see here that we have designed a pipeline uh, stages of five pipeline stages, and we have converted our single cycle code into five stages of pipeline, in which each stage consists of some of the operation. Uh, like you can show uh, see here that the first uh, stage is instruction fetch, uh, which we call a fetch cycle. Then second is a decode cycle, Th third is the execution cycle, fourth is the memory cycle, and fifth is the write back cycle. So as this is the uh, this is the representation of the pipelines that which it shows initially in on the first clock cycle. Whenever you are running your uh, processor in the first clock cycle, you are going to fetch the first instruction. Uh, in the first cycle, in the second cycle, you are going to decode the first cycle. In third clock cycle, you are uh, going to execute the first instruction, uh, which has been shown here. In the fourth like cycle, you are definitely uh, performing the that uh, memory stage if it consists uh, consists of accessing the memory or not. And in the fifth cycle, data generated from the whole instruction operation will be right back to the register file. So this was the whole uh, step which we have seen into the single cycle code. But here is the twist: you can see that initially first cycle you just have one fetch instruction in the whole pipe stages. If you can see a uh, whole uh, column wise, then the initially the first cycle you just have a first instruction fetch cycle, right? But in when you move towards the second cycle, you can see that you have two instructions coming in parallel. Number one, the first cycle is in the decode stage, and the second instruction is going is getting fed from the instruction memory. Similarly, if you move towards the third uh, third uh, clock cycle column, so you can see that the first instruction has been moved towards the execution stage, the second instruction moved towards the decode stage, and the third instruction is getting fed from the instruction memory. And same in to the fourth cycle, you can see that the first instruction moved towards the data memory stage. The third, in, the second instruction moves to the execution stage. Uh, the third instruction moved to the decode stage, and we are fetching the fourth instruction from the instruction memory. And now we can move towards the fifth uh, instruction uh, clock cycle. This is the clock cycle where all of the stages of our pipeline has been occupied by each and every instruction. Right? You can see here that the fifth in the fifth cycle. Our first instruction is in the write back stage. Our second instruction is in the data memory stage. Our third instruction is in the execution stage. Our fourth is instruction in the decode stage. And our fifth instruction is in the instruction fetch stage. So here you can see that the we have designed, if you have seen this horizontal representation, that there are five stages. So in the clock cycle number five, you can see in vertically that all the five stages have been occupied, but not by the single instruction, but by five different instructions. So this is the one of the advantage we get in the pipelining that in parallel, we are executing five instruction at a time at different stages and there are different operations that we perform on them according to their uh, control signals. And if we move toward the sixth uh, cycle to now, you can see that the first instruction has been completely com uh, complete. So we have uh, the, our whole pipe stages have been moved uh, once uh, uh, row down you can see that our second instruction is the write back stage. Fourth instruction, third instruction is in the data memory stage. The fourth instruction is in the execution stage. Fifth, in, uh, fifth instruction is in the decode stage. Uh, I guess I, uh, sorry, uh, I forgot, uh, skipped one of the row uh, column. Sorry, again, uh, let's move towards again. In the sixth cycle, you can see our second instruction is the write back stage, right? Third instruction is the data memory stage. Fourth instruction is in the execution stage. Fifth instruction is in the decode stage, and now we are as one of our the pipeline stages have been uh, uh, completely free from any execution. So now we are fetching our new instruction, which is the sixth instruction into our pipeline. 
and this process keep on going until all of the code has been completely verified. So now you can see the first instruction took five clock cycles to complete the execution, but in the second instruction only take four clock cycles. Okay. In third instruction, it takes a uh, lesser clock cycle. So as you can see that all the stages are getting occupied. So the uh, execution of your instruction is getting lower by lower as it is shown that it is taking the five clock cycles, but the idea is saying to say that after fifth instruction, you are get, in the sixth instruction, you are getting the result. In the seventh cycle, you are getting the result. In the eighth cycle, you are getting the result. In ninth cycle, you are getting the result. In tenth cycle, you are getting the result. Okay, this was also happening in a single cycle code that at every single clock cycle, we are getting the result. But when we move towards a complex designing, definitely we have to break, uh, have to implement some FSMs or multi cycles and have to uh, add some extra hardware or some delays into it. So definitely that will going to increase the clock cycles of execution. So this is how we reduce that part. So I guess this is the basic overview of the pipeline, uh, abstract view of pipelining. I hope it was clear in the pre uh, previous lecture as well. And I've also going with, go with the recap. So if anyone of you have missed those uh, uh, videos, so they can have a broad overview of what is the pipeline in this. So let's now move towards the our implementation part. What we are going to implement today are we are going to implement the fetch cycle data part. So here you can see that I've uh, added the snap of just a fetch cycle, not the whole pipeline architecture, just the fetch cycle. So definitely we are going to implement the chunks like this and in the end we are going to combine all of them. So in the first cycle, you can see that what things we are needed. Number one, we have needed a PC mux. It is definitely uh, used in the branch instruction as well that either you can using, uh, going to use a PC plus four uh, counter value or you are going to use a PC target value according to the instruction. And then there is a PC counter register which uh, we have gone that it is going to uh, store the count of the instruction memory, the, the program counter. Instruction memory, definitely we need instruction memory from where we are going to fetch our instruction and a PC plus four either, which is going to add four increment into our PC counter. So, uh, and right here, you can see the representation of the signals have some names, it's have scripts in it, right? You can see here that it is a PCF bar, PCF. Here you can see PC plus four, F. F means the, they are the signals of the FET cycle. Here you can see that I have some added some of the signals which represent the instruction D, PCD, PC plus four D. D here represents the, the decode cycle of the pipeline stage. And here you can see that we have two signals which are represented as PC source E and PC target E. So these are represented as the uh, signals of the execution cycle. So definitely we are going to name the signals as per our pipeline stages so that we, we get uh, the tracking of those signals get easy and we don't get distracted by the signals name. So these are the four uh, modules we are going to integrate today and complete our fire cycle. So without any delay, let's move towards our coding part. Uh, initially, uh, definitely you can have the basic coding. Uh, all the blocks have been coded individually. So I'm going to just clone the five files which we have implemented in a single cycle code. So definitely I'm going to add the description of this GitHub lib also. So you can use the files from here. All you have to do is the git clone this repo wherever you want. Okay, so I'm going over to the list. So this is going to take over. Oh, so the my cloning of the Git repo has been completed. As we can see, we are having a RISC-V single cycle code repository here, right? If I go into this RISC-V single cycle code, so you can see that we have a uh, source uh, folder here and the document folder and other readme as well. So let's open our files into Visual Studio Code. Uh, all the installation step which we are going to use the I very log simulator. And the VS Code, the uh, installation guide have been provided in a RISC-V single cycle tutorial first video. So you can go and look at that, how you are going to install the software for that. Okay, so let's open the folder into a repository. Okay, let's move towards the source folder. So I am going, uh, here you can see that we have already have two sing top, uh, top. There's a single cycle top and a single cycle top test bench. So definitely we are not going to use a single cycle top here. We are going to use a pipeline top. So let's uh, add a new module here and name as a fast cycle dot, right? So let's start with our coding. I hope it is visible for you guys. Uh, okay, let me open the uh, ship, uh, 
modules which are going to add is we are going to add a PC, PC adder, mux, and our instruction memory. Okay, okay, now I work. Okay. So let's start with the declaration of our module. Module is fetch cycle. Okay. okay, right here we are going to represent uh, different modules we are going to create initially, and then we are going to combine with our top module. Okay, so the, my fetch cycle will have a clock in it. Uh, I will have a reset and uh, definitely what other signals which I would need if we can move towards the world. Okay, so if I convert this into a, a, a one of my, what say, in a, a module, so you can say that PC source is an input, PC target E is also an input. Clock and reset is definitely are by default input, so we have to declare them everywhere. So the one of my input is PC source E and PC target E. So let's define these inputs. Uh, definitely the PC source is a control signal. So it will be a single, uh, right, uh, right, only right. PC target E. And the outputs of the spread cycle will be instruction D, PC D and PC plus 4 Instruction D, PCD, and PC plus four, right? So let's first uh, definitely as we have our coding practice that initially we are going to declare the inputs and outputs of our module. So input log, comma reset. Input PC source E, which is a single bit uh, signal. Input PC target E. Okay, so PC target E will going to be a 30, uh, 32 bit signal as it is a target value which contain a PC value. So definitely going to be 32 bit values. And uh, outputs will be Instruction is also 32 bits, so it will be instruction D. Right, then we have an output of, I guess again, 32 bits, which is PCD and PC plus four, right? So here we have declared the input and outputs. Now first, before moving anything, uh, let's declare the interim wise which we have shown here that PCF bar PCF and PC plus 4F. So these three will be the uh, our main internal signals. Definitely the more signals I'm going to introduce in it, but let's start with these three. PCF bar PC and PC plus 4F, right? So declaring interim wires. So let's say the wire is uh, 32 bits. All our PCF. Okay, I will show the PC bar if I'm representing it as then I have a PC underscore also PCF and I have PC plus four up, right? So these are some interim wires which we have designed. Now first initiate Let's initiate our module so that definitely we can have an idea of what other wires we are going to require in connecting our design. So initially I'm going to declare a PC mux. Okay, so here we have a mux definition. So we are just going to copy the mux uh, module and represent it mux. And here I'm naming as PC mux, right? For A, B, Control signal and the output C. I'm not going to details of how you are, uh, what are the syntax and then definitely those are all covered in our previous uh, tutorial. So you can have a look at that uh, for the greater idea. So I, I'm going to on here, we are going to focus on the pipeline, how we are going to implement the pipeline. Okay, so as we can see in the marks, the first input is zero. At the zero pin, we are having a PC plus 4F. So definitely I've uh, declared this uh, PC plus 4F. So we are just going to copy and uh, connect it with the A pin. And if we can see that in the input one, we are having the input wire of PC target E, which is our input. So definitely we are going to just connect our input to PC target E. 
our selection bit of the PC box is PC source E, so we are which is also one of our input. So we are just going to copy and connect it with our PC E. And then the output of is our is PC F. So we are just going to connect this PC F with here. Okay. So this is how we have just connected our PC box. Now let's declare our PC counter. Okay, so we have a PC counter module here as well. Let's just copy and paste it. All right. Having modules uh, made initially make our implementation very much easy. So let's name it as a program counter block. We have a reset pin. We have a PC, then we have a PC next. So, so uh, the definitive connections are very much sim uh, 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 same. The clock will be connected with the clock. The reset input will be connected with the reset. Okay, the PC will be our PCF, which is coming with PC bar uh, as shown in the diagram. And the PC neck will be our PC F. So this is how we are going to connect our PC module. Let's declare our instruction memory, right? So instruction memory is here declared. I'm going to just copy it and place it here. Okay, the module name you can uh, uh, name it as your requirement uh, as you want, but right now I'm making it very much common, so this and easy to understand for everyone. I M M stand for instruction memory, right? Here the signals are very much very so less. So at the reset, again, we are going to connect the reset. Okay, for address A, we know that the PCF is the connecting with the address of the instruction memory. So we are just going to connect our PCF signal with our address signal and RD. So RD is one of the signal which have been, we have not the declare, declare which is going to the register file. So definitely we have to make a signal for it. So let's make a new wire. Definitely we are going to 31 bits and I'm naming it as instruction F, right? So instruction F, F means that instruction at the first stage, right? So this is how we are going to declare our instruction memory. Let's now declare PC. Okay, so PC error, right? Uh, PC error here is it a module I'm just going to copy paste. So last name is PC adder. A input, B input, and we have a C input. Okay, so the at A we are going to have our PC F, which is going our current PC, then and the four we have a constant value of four hexadecimal. So definitely it will be going to 8 bits, hexadecimal 4. And definitely we are going to get some output from it. So we are declared as a Y already. The PC plus 4 will be connected as the output of the PC adder. Right? So this is how we have created our module. But uh, let's see that we have missed our this one of the registers. Here you can see that the register is just showing as a one whole register. But definitely we are not going to implement a, such a big register in it. So we have to define three register, one for instruction D, PCD and PC plus 4D. So definitely let's do it here. Uh, this can be done at the top cycle as well. Uh, so uh, you can implement it into in, in, uh, internal modules as well. So for now I'm going to implement, uh, we'll show you how we are going to implement it in internal module. But in, from the pre next videos, we are not going to implement internal module. We are going to implement in the top module, right? So here we are going to declare the declaration of registers. Okay. So that for the register, we know we are using the keyword of reg and he definitely all the registers are 32 bits. So simply what I've been doing the instruction 
I will be named as instruction F fetch, which represent the instruction fetch stage. It is a fetch stage register of instruction, right? So keeping the name convention for you is very much uh, necessary to make things easy for you. In the same way, let's say PCF underscore bridge and comma PC plus four underscore register. So here how we have introduced our registers. Uh, now for the registers logic, uh, we know that we are going to use an always block. So we will say that always at the pause edge of the block, you have to uh, update the clock at the passage of the clock or the nag edge of the reset, right? The why I'm adding the reset clock here because definitely when I am going to reset press and provide the input reset to the whole design, I want all the register to be initialized to its default value. Otherwise, not keep making the registers uh, reset, it will be going to propagate the X which will not be required in our design. So initially, I'm going to simply add a condition that if Reset is is an active row reset, so I'm going to have a condition of uh, hexa binary zero. If my reset is applied zero, so I want all these three registers to be initialized as a zero values, right? So let's present this thirty two bit hexa right? Instruction F and what other have PCF as well. Okay, let's just copy and paste it. And the third part will uh, PC plus 4 average. So here I just, okay, I guess this is very much straightforward. Not it. If we want to uh, just uh, initialize our register with some default value. So whenever the reset apply to our design, so we want the, all the register to be initialized with the default value. Otherwise else, if the reset has been not been applied and we are dwelling at a, a normal execution, so I want these registers to be updated with the their updated value. So at the instruction F register, I want my instruction F to be a flop, which can be available at the next cycle of my execution, right? In PCF register, I want my current PC, which is PCF to be got reg on my register, so which can be used in the next cycle. and it, Similarly, in PC plus four, I want my PC plus four value to get reg into the register. So this is how, uh, definitely I'm going, sorry, I forgot to add uh, the comment. You can say that the fetch cycle register logic. Right. So this is how we going implement the registers in for in the pipeline. You see that what we have done, we have just connected our output port internal first to the register. First, they are going to update on the register, and then we are going to uh, assign the these registers value to our output ports. In this way, we are saving our in uh, current value into the register and using it into the next cycle. So this is how we just achieve our pipelining. Uh. Uh. uh implementation or you can say pipelining uh, process uh, in our designing okay but here still we are missing one thing that i have just uh right now i have just uh connected my output post of the modules with it and saving it to the register i have not saved the register not assigned the register value to all my output post uh, uh, post which are instruction d pcd and pc plus 4d so for that we are going to use the assign statements Okay, uh, make sure that the, your outputs are not registers. Uh, keep them into wire so that uh, they are easily to be manipulated. Because uh, we can also declare the output as the registers, but here we are not going to use that approach. We are declaring interim registers and we are making sure that our input and output both are as a declared as a wires. Okay, so I'm adding in command. Assigning registers value to the output port. So here we are going to use our assign statement, assign uh, first instruction D. Okay. And simply I'm going to just map my instruction F register into it. Definitely you can add our, uh, we can also add our reset condition here also in the output port, but as we have implemented that into our register, 
uh, so we don't need that. But definitely, if you want your design to be, make sure that there is no exposition to delay. So for the sake of your safety, you can add this logic as well. That I'm making sure that my, whenever the reset apply to my design, I want all my signals to be uh, initialized by default value, which is eight zero, right? Let's just copy it and place it twice so we don't have to do it again. And just popping here. Okay. Okay. The second input was PCD. So I'm just going to replace this PCD and my third was PC plus 4D. So PC plus 4D was get replaced by my so this is have been applied uh, uh, this is how we have implemented our first cycle as again I'm going to very quick overview that initially we have declared our input and output ports of our first unit and then we have declared the interim wires which have been required then declaration of the registers here then we have to use our modules that in which we have used a mux which has declared as a pc mux pc program counter instruction memory and the pc adder and here we have implemented the register logic where we have just a uh, map our output post of the modules to and save into the registers and in the end we have used the assigned statement to map the register value to our output post so this is how we have just implemented or converted our single cycle fed cycle into our whole pipeline version right if i can show you my previous one so here you can see this there is no register applied between the decode uh, register file and the instruction fed state but what we have done, we have just implemented a single register here, so which we get the answers delay. In the single cell, there is no delay in the outputs, but here we are going to see when we are going to perform a test, we are going to see that there will be a one cycle delay in our output uh, waveform. So let's uh, start with our designing the test bench. Uh, so I'm just adding a new file here. Uh, test cycle underscore TV dot. Okay, let's keep move it to this module TV. Okay, so first I'm going to add some initial beginners to uh waveform. Definitely we have no. Some file is dot bcd and I want my variables to be Dump every variable I want to be done into our initial prompt. Okay, so first, always I want to generate my block as well. So let's uh, not of block with the delay of 50 nanoseconds. So this is the generation. Block. and this is the generation of BCD file. Okay, so first initially I have to declare my test bench module. So declare the TB. Yeah, you can say declare the design under test module, which I want to be verified. So we are going to just quickly replicate, copy and paste it here. Uh, pet cycle is my module name. I'm representing this module as a dot because it is a tough. Uh, then I have some signals which is clock. Uh, we said PC source E, PC target E. Okay. Instruction D, we have a PCD and we have a PC plus one. Right, so definitely uh, in previous videos, we have gone through that first and we have to know that what uh, are our inputs and outputs. So we have to declare inputs as a register in our test bench and output as a wire in our test bench, right? So I know that uh, all of these are my inputs. So I'm just going to declare them as a declare IOs. So first, initially, I'm going to play reg, comma, reset, comma, 
PC source group. Okay, uh, right now I just have to implement, uh, provide every each input to a uh, five cycle module so I can verify it. But when we are going to uh, combine all of the modules and we have uh, completed our pipeline version, so then definitely we are just have to provide a clock and the this side we don't have to provide any of the uh, signals into it. Okay, PC target E will be my input. So it is a 32 bits input, right? And my wires are also 32 bits. So wires name will be instruction D. Um, okay, for now, we can also have use the same names or we can have uh, some different names as well, but making it uh, same so it get easy to understand. So just now going to connect all of them. Okay, I have about to declare my block as a one starting as one, so it will going to replicate as zero. So I have the first cycle will be my positive or uh, negative block cycle. Okay, now the last step is to provide the stimulus to the design. So let's begin with initial begin and end. So first, definitely I'm going, uh, as we have provided the clock is always working. So first I'm going to provide my reset, which will be a one binary zero. As we have active load reset, then I have to, I'm waiting for 200 clock cycles. Then I am, uh, making my reset, uh, keeping, uh, may, uh, taking out my design from away from the reset. That's why I'm providing a one and I have to provide other signals as well. So here I'm going to provide my PC source E the value zero right now, because I don't, I want him to use the PC target plus four, not the PC target value, right? So PC target is also, uh, less I'm, uh, providing as a 32 bit hexadecimal zero point. And then we are going to add a delay of few cycles so we can see that how it's keep on working. And after 500 cycles, don't forget we have to add a finish command so that it can finish as the clock have been always blocked. So it will going to keep on running forever. So this is our test band uh, generated. So let's now test it out uh, by upload using the I very log commands. These all have been explained in our tutorial, single cycle tutorial first video. So you can definitely you can go and have a look at that. I will also show you the video tutorial links afterward of the video. So out dot out VVP. Um, okay, sorry, I forgot. I have to go to the source folder. So I very log minus O out dot VVP. Fetch cycle TV and my talk module is cycle okay okay now one thing we have forgot that i haven't included my all of the modules which i have used here so let's quickly include all those modules so we don't have an issue pc dot p let's be quickly Okay, so PC dot V one is that, and the second was PC adder, third was marks, and my fourth memory was instruction memory. Okay, so let's run this command. I hope. The, oh my God! See here, you can see that we have got some few errors. So let's say what errors these are. Uh, we are getting an in syntax error line number fifty five. Okay, so let's move towards line number 55 quickly and why we are having this block here. Oh, I think I forgot, no. Well, for event control expression, invalid event control. Oh, oh sorry, I made some spelling mistake. Process and negative. Okay. So that's done. Oh, okay. This shows that my there is no error. I've been designed and uh, have been compiled successfully. So just write pvp out dot pvp. Here you can see that dump file has been finished. 
So let's open our GTK wave quickly. GTK wave. And done dot. Okay, again, the word. Go to the source. GTK wave. Done dot. Okay. Let's just include quickly signal the flows is the clock. Reset. Uh, PC source C, PC target E, instruction D, PC D, and the PC. Okay. Here you can see that initially they have haven't provided my PC source E and PC target E, so the values are X. Now, just suppose if I haven't provided the internal reset logic to my output so the, those output will also become an X. And if they are connected to some other post, so the, my whole design will going to become an X. So to, that's why to avoid the situation, we have provided the interim reset signal to each and every signal. So make sure that all of my signals are get reset to a known value, right? So let's see, first initially we have provided the reset for 200 cycles. So here we can see that 200 cycles, my reset has been activated. And after 200 cycles, my reset got uh, deactivated. And initially my PC target value has provided zeros both. And here you can see that all of my values are still the X. Now that's the question that why my values are X here. It shouldn't be the X. So let's see our design that haven't we made some mistake here. Okay, here the reset is zero. One. Okay, I guess the design have the active high reset, not the low reset. So let's see if we can replicate just wrapping the signals can make any changes here. Again, once have the ticket is open, so I don't need to run it again. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I think that is there is some design. So my reset has been active high. So whenever I provide one signal to my reset, so my design get reset. And after that, uh, when the reset has been loaded, uh, all of my signals have been reset to zero. I think there's some, I have to make sure again that either I'm wrong or right. PC is okay. Okay, let's make it not the not signal because it's confusing. So I'm making it one binary zero. Here also, I hope there is no max, max. Okay, so here also, so let's change it to reset is double equals to one by L C right? Uh, and let's change it again here to one and zero. Okay, why we have an instruction D at X value? Now this is something new which I have to see that why my PC okay, let's move towards the interim signal right? So let's first see that our PC marks what PC values we are getting. So okay, let's see that that time that instruction we have used a PC F bar right? Oh, we are having a PC F bar into X. Wow. Why is that? Because our input were PC plus four. Seems like our values. Uh, I guess I have to change my clock signal from. Zero initialize. So having errors in the part of the design, so don't get upset with it. Don't get scared from it. Debugging also part of the coding which we have to learn. Uh, okay. So first we have get a zero value. Uh, okay, I guess my PC. Let's first see what is our PCF. PCF is Z. Why? Did I forget to add some signals in my set side? Okay, let's start with the PC marks first. Now. So we have A's, B, we have X, but because of the A, we are getting X. Why we are getting A, X first initially at the A, we have a PC plus 4F. And PC plus 4F is an output of my adder. Uh, adder is becoming uh, X because my PCF is not here and PCF is going to occur at the next clock cycle, I guess. My what is the my PC issue? PC values reset zero, so it will be PC. Or otherwise, it will be PC next. 
Okay, so let's have a question, please. Okay, initially we get the zero value, but after that PC next become the Z. PC next, oh, I have Does it mean that I haven't connected my PC next? Oh, see here we have done a mistake. This will be my PC next because PC next is my input and PC is my output, sorry. Uh, we have just, uh, Connected our wrong signals here. Hope this time works out. Oh, definitely sure. So let's just delete all the unwanted signal here first so that we can track it out easily. Right? So here you can see uh, our code is running because of just a simple. Uh, uh, wrong connection, our design was not working correctly. Here we have uh, provided our first reset for 200 nanosecond cycles. And after uh, pro, uh, deactivating the reset, our PC target value is zero, provided PC target is source E. So initially our values, here you can see that in the signal ci uh, single cycle core, eventually we are getting the values of instruction at the same clock cycle. But now you can see that uh, uh, we are getting the instruction fetch in PC plus four after the cycle, right? So this is the first cycle we are just fetching and we are getting the updated value into the next cycle. And we, you can see the second instruction is getting fetched into the third cycle. Uh, if we can just uh, see at this uh, diagram, it initially first cycle, we doesn't have any, uh, here zero cycle, you can say that it's zero cycle. We don't have any output. We are just getting the instruction fetch, but we are not getting at the decode stage. So in if you can provide the third fetch signal, we have used the F signal, right? So, yes, no, sorry, not PC, if I want instruction F to be, see, see here instruction F signal shows that my instruction has get fetched into the fetch stage, but is not come toward the decode state. So first, this is the first cycle where our instruction get fetched. Now we have just map our uh, instruction to the decode in the next cycle. So here you can see that instruction D, which is a decode signal represented currently my instruction is at the decode stage. And my second instruction is getting fetched at the first cycle. And then this second instruction is getting mapped to the decode stage into the next cycle. And this cycle is go goes on moving. So this is how our instruction fetch cycle works in the, uh, in initially. Uh, definitely we have just implemented the fair cycle, so I can't show you the whole testing right now how, that, how the things work, but here you can see that first we have fair one instruction at the first stage, but we haven't put it into the output ports. We have mapped that output into the next cycle. So definitely this output will be connected as an input towards the decode file, decode cycle, so definitely uh, this will going to act as a decode instruction and all the decode operation will going to perform at this instruction. And similarly, at the same time the decode is happening, we are also fetching our second instruction with PC plus four. And the instruction has been fetched successfully and then we are going to map the second instruction to the third cycle where we are going to decode the second instruction and then in the same, we are going to fetch the third instruction. As currently, I don't have any instruction at this PC, so definitely showing me X. But if we have some instruction, definitely going to fetch that instruction from it. So I hope this uh, uh, help you out in understanding how we are going to bring the first initial fast cycle that are part of our pipeline version. Uh, I hope uh, all the concepts have been very much clear and we have all the codings have been very much clear to you. So that is all for today. Thank you very much and stay tuned for the next video. Allah Hafiz.